Let's kick off with the uh, South uh, Sudan uh, Sudanese currency recently launched. That was launched last month. And uh, the, that began circulation, as I say, last, last month, one-to-one -one with uh, Sudan's existing pound. But the old Sudanese pound has still been in circulation um, within, in the currency. That's been falling on the black market, though. Why has it been in a dep depreciating trend? And what impact will this have on Sudan's new currency? Well, what we've seen obviously is a lot of uncertainty around the collaboration between the newly born state, South Sudan and Sudan, on a number of key issues. And one of those is on this collaboration on the currencies. So we've seen South Sudan introduce their own currency, um, which will replace the Sudanese pound, which was currently in, which was previously in circulation under uh, its semi-independence um, before the 9th of July. And we've also seen Sudan introduce its own currency. Um, so the one issue that is obviously going to be uh, key is how they actually are going to remove those old Sudanese pounds from, the, from circulation in South Sudan and replace them with something of value when they return those to the central bank of Sudan. Um, another other key uncertainties is the formalization of the oil sharing uh, oil revenue sharing agreement with Sudan uh, and how that will be able to transfer fiscal reserves from South Sudan uh, and oil reserves from South Sudan to Sudan as Sudan is heavily dependent on those resources for its external sector as well as its fiscal sector. We've seen in the past that um, the Sudanese government has attempted to improve its fiscal management and has sought to sort out its external debt in the sense that it um, is seeking to reduce its external debt from the 40 billion US dollars that it currently stands at, um, while also ensuring some fiscal savings and ensuring that its uh, foreign exchange reserves um, stabilize and hopefully increase. Now, with a lack of a formal arrangement between South Sudan and Sudan with regards to those oil revenues, it's slightly uncertain if they will be able to maintain that peg in light of um, not being having to direct access to those oil reserves, as South Sudan has 70 to 80 percent of that production capacity now within its borders. Um, so that's creating some uncertainty about the stability of the, the peg between uh, Sudan's currency and the US dollar, which currently stands at 2.7 against the dollar um, and we have seen that actually depreciate on the back of those so, uh, those uncertainties in the black market um, so it's moved to closer to 3.4 against the dollar on the parallel market um, and as I said that's on the back of the uncertainties around the oil share sharing agreement between yep. the south and the north as well as um, how that currency arrangement will be maintained moving forward. Uh, talking about the uh, number of uh, north uh, pounds circulating in the south. It's estimated at around $700 million. Uh, the central bank of the south said citizens have until the 1st of September to replace those pounds with the new currency. If they don't do this, what are the risks uh, to South Sudan in terms of uh, their, their position uh, with the currency and what this might mean for their new currency going forward? And if the north speeds up their replacement of the old pound with the new currency, what does this mean for the South? Well, the greatest fear of, of Sudan is obviously that these, these um, Sudanese dollars will flood the market in the newly independent economy of, of, this, of the North and therefore create a liquidity surge that could uh, add further pressure on their, their pegged exchange rate. Um, obviously, South Sudan is keen to ensure that its currency maintains its value, which is now pegged one-to-one -one with the North Sudanese current currency, um, and wants to ensure that its means of um, payment becomes the single form of payment in South Sudan as to maintain its, its independence as, um, as a monetary policy authority in the South. Um, so the question is rather how much or how they're going to arrange um, that transferal of the amount of dollars that they seek, the amount of pounds, sorry, that they seek to collect from their own economy when they replace the existing uh, circulated currency with their new currency. Um, They've already indicated that they'll be quite strict in uh, their foreign exchange regulations in that they will not allow those currencies to, or the new currency to leave the country without permission from them. And they've also warned against smuggling their currency against the border, um, sorry, across the border. Mm. So they are seeking to, to uh, reach an agreement with the Central Bank of Sudan on how they will transfer um, that estimated 700 million US dollars um, in Sudanese pounds yeah. that is currently in there, will soon be in their position 
um, and ensure that that is done in a in a way that is amenable to themselves. Yvette, we have to take a look at that uh, Kenyan shilling sitting at 92.90. That's a fresh record low against the dollar. Uh, some saying that's a global risk aversion, uh, which has caused the rise in the dollar, feeding into a shilling weakness. But of course, we've had month-end dollar demand from the energy sector, also food importation weighing on the local currency and inflationary expectations. What are you reading about this uh, spate of shilling weakness that we've seen this year? Well, we saw earlier this week that the central bank maintained its central bank rate at 6.25% and furthermore inject liquidity into the market through a reverse repo on Tuesday. Um, so we feel that obviously with the inflation expectations rising and inflation at 15.5% as was released on Monday, we feel that uh, a lot of this domestic liquidity as well as inflation expectations is creating some jitteriness around the, the Kenyan shilling um, and with the liquidity adding to pressure on the local currency. Um, also, obviously, the month-end flows have contributed to that flow, but we feel that obviously accommodative monetary policy stance, as it is, as we perceive it at present, um, is adding to some of that weakness in the Kenyan shilling. What is your outlook for the shilling? Could it could it go all the way to 100, or is this the level that it's going to sit at? It looks like it could go past another key psychological level of 93 at this point. Well, at present, we see very few things that actually could um, see that a shilling would reverse the trend that it's currently on. Um, as we said, monetary policy has remained relatively, uh, relatively accommodative. Um, we've seen the liquidity continue to be injected by the central bank. Um, we've seen inflation expectations continue to rise. And we currently don't see um, many mechanisms in place that would reverse the trend that we've seen. So we may bearish on the Kenyan shilling on the back of the fact that um, the central bank rate remains uh, far below uh, where we feel would be appropriate for the current level of inflation. Whilst the central bank of Kenya is maintaining that loose monetary policy, on the other hand, we've had Uganda's a central bank coming out, changing its monetary policy to target inflation. They've been quite aggressive in terms of uh, reiterating their stance that it's a tighter monetary policy a, a situation at the moment. There, the Ugandan shilling, though, falling uh, close to that 2,700 uh, level, but it has retraced somewhat as the, we've seen the central bank take measures to stem that decline there, also increasing their uh, repo rate to around 14%. They say that they're targeting inflation, core inflation of 5%. Do you think they've got inflation under control and that they're taking the right measures to manage uh, the currency on that end? Well, we definitely have seen a more assertive response from the Central Bank of U Uganda um, in response to those inflationary pressures. Obviously, their inflation cycle is even uh, less benign than that of Kenya, with inflation coming in above 18% this month. Um, so there's also a dire need for them to be quite aggressive against that inflation. So in their, their first monetary policy statement under this inflation targeting regime, um, they were quite vocal about their intention of maintaining a tight monetary policy and taking the necessary measures to address inflation expectations. Um, they have acknowledged that a lot of the pressure on inflation has been from exogenous factors through food prices aggravated by the local drought as well as oil prices. But they want to avoid those inflation expectations becoming ingrained in society and therefore have been quite aggressive uh, by increasing their central, their newly introduced central bank rate by 100 basis points at their, at their first uh, meeting under this new framework. Um, so we feel fairly confident that they, they will seek to uh, stabilize the currency and perhaps even see it appreciate as well as um, tighten monetary policy further to address those inflation expectations.